Hey everybody, this is Oscar from Nectar. We're the US distributor for Bitwig, and today we're gonna to give you an overview and show you what Bitwig Studio is all about. So first I'll give you kind of the lay of the land of where everything is kind of associated here in Bitwig. Uh, basically right now we're looking at our timeline mode. So this is the traditional from left to right. You start at the beginning of time and go you know, as long as you need to. Uh, over on the left hand side we have the inspector. So if you're familiar with the uh, inspector from other applications, you'll feel right at home with that. Over on the right hand side, we have our browser, which is where we're going to pull in basically any files from our computer and drag them into the Bitwig world. Very easy to do so as well. Um, on the bottom side, you'll see a couple of uh, different panels that pop up. We have an editing panel, automation panel. Uh, you can even have the mixer pull up right exactly um, in the uh, arrangement window as well too. But um, where a lot of the magic happens as well is over in the mixing window. So in the mixing window, that's where the mixer is obviously. Uh, so we'll be mixing our project from here. But we also have a uh, clip launcher. So this allows us to basically work in a nonlinear world. So, you know, basically time doesn't apply here when we're in nonlinear mode. And it's really the best of both worlds because you can still be uh, tracking as you normally would in the linear world. But if you want to have the flexibility to maybe try out some different drum parts behind your vocals, maybe a couple different guitar riffs, you can do so in the nonlinear world and see what works and see what doesn't work. And then go back and commit that to your linear world as well too. Uh, the beauty of Bitwig is that both of these worlds are actually merged together. So basically when I come back into my arranger uh, window and I hit my clip launcher button, I can actually see all my clips on the left hand side. And at this point I kind of call them my ideas, right? It's kind of like my idea bin. Uh, so I can keep all my individual riffs or phrases on the left hand side. And then uh, when I really want to commit it to the timeline, I just got to drag and drop right on over to the timeline side. So as I said before, it's the merging of the two worlds. It's linear and nonlinear, and it's the best of both worlds. So if you're coming from a linear editor, you'll feel right at home. If you're coming from a nonlinear editor, editor, you'll feel right at home, uh, but you get the best of, of both of those environments. So let's talk about creating a track and how editing a track works. So within Bitwig Studio, I can actually go through and edit audio um, at the clip level when I'm in nonlinear mode. So really what that means is that as I play back my bass part here, I can go through and maybe uh, let's do something called split at onset. So what Bitwig Studio will do is it'll find all those onsets or hit points uh, within your individual track. So once it finds those onsets, I can go through and say, hey, let's go ahead and split my audio at those exact points. So once I hit split at onsets, you'll see that I no longer have just one audio event. I actually have multiple audio events within this clip, which is really nice because you can do some uh, pretty amazing things with this. So let's say I wanted to get this last section and maybe delete. Maybe get out that slap by trimming it a little bit. If I want to copy and paste, I can grab these three. Drop that in there. See what it sounds like. Maybe do one more copy of it. And then if I want to go through and affect pitch only on those uh, individual things, I can go over to pitch. Move this over to zero. And um, I can just select those three at the end. And then over the inspector, you'll notice that it actually changes depending on what I have selected. So before you saw the uh, channel strip, but if I clip on, click on three individual clips, you'll see that I have all the controls that I need for that. So let's repitch that. So now you can hear that I've only affected and, and repitched that one section over there. But I, if I didn't want to go through and uh, change the whole thing, I can just click on the clip and change that down by step. Pretty easy to do. Another pretty amazing thing uh, within Bitwig Studio is the ability to have multiple tabs open, multiple projects open at the same time. So up here you'll see I've got two different tabs. And so um, you know maybe I have a master tab open that has kind of my, my entire document or my entire project and I want to work on sound design for drums, I can have that open in a different project. And then from there, it's just a matter of grabbing that and dragging and dropping into my new project. So let's say I want to put it right there. So now I've got that acoustic bass track. Turn this on. And you'll see now, here's my clip that I had earlier, and now all I have to do is just grab it, drag and drop it directly into my project as well too. So it's nice to be able to have multiple projects open all at the same time and just kind of drag and drop what you need and what you don't need uh, from there. So a couple of other things. Um, you know, we, we talk a lot about uh, containers in, in Bitwig. And basically, uh, with containers and the unified modulation system, uh, you have a lot of creative possibilities. So essentially, if I wanted to go through and um, let's make a new track really quick. Uh, let's do this. Bring in something like a drum machine. So we'll come over here. 
I can open up uh, containers and I'll bring in drum machine really quickly. You'll see the drum machine here pops up on the bottom. It's empty, but I can go through and open up a preset just by clicking on that and you'll see that all these pads are loaded now. So the beauty of, of having um, you know drum machine being a container is that I can go through and actually add effects to individual tracks if I want to, or individual channels of this drum machine, I should say. Um, but I can also put things on the back end of it and uh, really affect the entire thing. So if I want to put, let's say, a filter on the back end of that, I can. Um, before that, I can put something like um, LFO modulator. So the way that we get these talking and get them nested together and utilize the, the unified modulation system is I can grab it, drag it into the effects chain, and now they're actually linked up together. So when I hit the LFO button, all I have to do is click and drag on um, any parameter that I want to get going here. So once it's dragged over, um, they're talking to each other, and they can actually go through and modulate it. And that goes really for anything else. So if I wanted to go through and uh, put a delay in that same chain and add that LFO to be uh, uh, affecting that same, um, uh, any device within that chain, I should say, um, it'll affect it as well, too. And the cool thing is that I can go through and save that as a preset. So as long as everything is nested together, um, and all the modulations are, are um, like I said, it's a unified system and it can go across really infinite amount of possibilities that you can kind of mix and match with each other. You can save that as a preset and then bring that up uh, as many times as you want to in these kind of big massive chains. So from a sound design perspective, it's pretty amazing the amount of stuff that you could do and the flexibility that you have um, with the modulation system built in as well. Uh, we'll cover one more thing real quick. So um, we have histogram based editing as well too. So that means if, let's say something like on this kick line, uh, if I wanted to go through and just kind of maybe do a panning effect with this, I'm going to go ahead and splice this as I did before um, to onsets. I'll select the entire clip here. And then on the left side, uh, you'll notice we have um, parameters for pitch, pan, gain, and then we have our individual knobs here. So if I were to move this panning left or right, it's going to obviously go through and pan left or right. But a really cool way to kind of randomize it is by clicking on this arrow right here and using the histogram to kind of randomize uh, where the panning is actually happening. So you can see now that you know some things are panned left, some things are panned right. Uh, we can change the spread of that as well too. And we can also do that for things like gain and pitch. So if I wanted to change gain, I could switch over to gain, open this up, and then kind of randomize the, uh, the loudness as well too uh, using our chaos controls and histograms. So you know, really, when somebody asks me what is Bitwig, it's all about workflow. You know, it's about um, make, taking less steps to get to the end result, which is making music. And I think that's the most important part. You want to get the technology out of the way, um, be able to get your ideas out as quickly as possible. And uh, Bitwig has a lot of things that might seem minor, some things that seem major, but you put them all together, and it really comes down to workflow and how quickly you can work within Bitwig Studio. So that's a quick overview on Bitwig Studio. Obviously, there's a lot of stuff that we can go into more detail. Uh, but if you have more questions on Bitwig Studio, please contact your Sweetwater sales engineer and they'll take care of you.